From the New Living Translation of the Bible. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember, the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. For a few moments, on this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, An Unyielding Foundation. All right. Mm. An unyielding foundation mm -hmm. for a theme. I want us to ponder after 63 years what we do in faith and by faith makes a difference. Hallelujah. It makes a difference. We've come to celebrate 63 years of Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Central Iceland, New York. Somebody should have gave God praise. We are here to celebrate another year of service for our Lord and our Savior. Yeah. We as believers cannot take the call to serve lightly. So Sister Joyce, we thank God for those who have paved the way. Amen. We praise God Hallelujah. for those who are paving the way. Amen. Amen. And we have hope and great anticipation from God for those who will pave the way. The songwriter simply says, We've come this far. By faith, leaning on the Lord, uh -huh. trusting in his holy word, and he never failed us yet. Yeah. Understand that that's a shouting point yeah. on today because we serve a God who has never failed us yet. 
We've had issues. We've had problems. We have not always seen eye to eye. But we serve a God who has never failed us yet. Some of us have been sick. And we even tire of being sick, but we can rejoice because we serve a God who has who has never failed us yet. Hallelujah. We've been rejected. We've been cast aside. We've been ignored. But we serve a God that has never left us nor forsaken us. And due to the fact that he has never failed us yet, we cannot turn around. We cannot go back to the way that we used to be in our former life. We can't go back to the nonsense. We can't go back to the brokenness. We must move forward because we've come this far by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We gather. Reverend Slater is celebrating. Yes. My Lord. 63 years of gospel ministry. Amen. My Lord. Ministry. This, my brothers and my sisters, is a great achievement. Yes. Hallelujah. But it is only by God's grace that we've been able to do it. Yes, Lord. But Sister Joyce it has taken great perseverance and genuine faith to get us here to this point on today. Yes. Think about it. Sister Regina, over six decades of dealing with the different dynamics and adversities that we encounter in Suffolk County. Yes. This only can be achieved by being empowered with strength yes. from above. Yes. And also yet again, it takes great perseverance and a sincere faith. Being able to navigate the circumstances and the situations that have arisen over 63 years can only be done by the guidance of God. Yet again, it takes great perseverance and great faith. Being able to continually assemble day after day, month after month, year after year, dealing with the different personalities that have come and gone can only be done through the peace of God. Hallelujah. And it takes perseverance in great faith. Hallelujah. Today, First and foremost, we celebrate God. Yes, hallelujah. But we celebrate the fact that he has bestowed upon us Deacon Woods the perseverance to see 63 years through. And he's given us the faith to do what needs to be done. No, it hasn't always been perfect. But God do the imperfect. God. God. Somebody missed that. God uses what is imperfect to do his perfect will. We give God the praise on today because he's bestowed upon us upon us the power to make a difference in our community. And let me throw this in parenthetically. This community would not be the same if there was no HMBC. And I want you to be encouraged on today, no matter what your circumstance may be, that with God you have the power to make a difference and to make it through. Sometimes we experience resistance as we walk this Christian walk. But we have the power yes. to make a difference and to make it through. Everybody ain't gonna like us. But we have the power to make a difference. 
Hallelujah. And to make it through weeping may endure for a night. All right. But we have the power yes. to make a difference. And to make it through the songwriter says, Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. Ah. Morning by morning, morning by morning. New mercies. Ancient be seen. New mercies. All that we have needed over 63 years. New mercy. New mercy. Thy hand has provided for 63 years. Great is thy faithfulness. Do I got a church up in here, up in here? Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, to ancient be seen. Mercy. We can shout with the voice of triumph. We can give praise. And we can celebrate simply because God has been faithful. He is faithful and he will always be faithful. We can't pat ourselves on the back. Because it is God and God alone that allows us to have the strength yes. that he gave us yes, to be able to persevere through the storm and through the rain. Yes, By persevering, we have continued to hold up the blood-stained banner. We have continued to spread the good news all over the world. We have continued to draw the sinner and encourage one another even in the midst of difficulty and frustration. And all of this has been done for the glory of all mighty God. Because he has made it happen through our faith. Hallelujah. The message Bible says, and we understand that it is a fundamental fact that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It is our handle on those things that we cannot see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. The author of Hebrews neither names himself nor clearly designates his arms. Are y'all with me, Bible readers? All right. However, we gather from the original title, which is to the Hebrews, All right. that the original recipients of the letter were Jewish Christians. Yes. Amen. The reader, my brothers and my sisters, is encouraged to continue to have confident trust in the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hope it's near Baptist Church. Yes. After 63 years, we must continue to have a confident hope in God. I don't care what you're going through. He is our confident hope. I don't care who comes or who goes, but he is our confident hope. We may be sick in our body, we may be destitute, but he's still our confident hope. And not only must he be our confident hope, the writer encourages the readers to reflect on the blessedness of God. Yes. Think about all that you've been through. The frustration. The hurt. The disappointment. The fact that life is trying to take you out. Hallelujah. But there's still time to reflect on the goodness of God. Why? Because in the middle of all of that, my Lord, he didn't leave you to go through it alone. 
Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has never left us nor forsaken us. And for that, it gives me hope. Even in the midst of hopeless situations, so we continue to have a confident trust. Yes. Yes. We reflect on the blessedness of God in the good times and the bad times. And we understand that in the end, we will receive all that God has promised. Amen. He never said there won't be any suffering. He didn't say everyone would accept the gospel from us. Amen. But what he does say is be faithful. Yes. And understand HMBC and God's places in my spirit if you're faithful over the little things. Somebody missed that. See, we want to jump out into the big things. We want to go. We want to go out into the deep with the floating zone. All right. <laughs> but we have to endure, and we have to get out of the shallow waters. See, understand when you go to the ocean, see, when you're in the shallow water, that's where the little fish are. All right. Man. But Jesus has caused us to be fishers of men. That means the church of Jesus Christ needs to be able to launch out into the deep. That's where the big fish are. And we can only launch out into the deep, Sister Sue, if we walk by faith and not by sight. The author lets the reader know that Christ is greater than any angel, any priest of any old covenant institution. And the reader is strongly encouraged to forsake not the salvation found in Jesus Christ. All right. We must grasp the fact that faith is necessary. Not the faith of your mother. Not the faith of Big Mom. Not the faith of the deacons. It's a personal thing. I can't march you through the gates. I can just point you to the gate. Hallelujah. But it is your job to make sure that you make it through. You're not going to be able to get up to the pearly gates and blame Pastor Moose. You're not going to be able to say, well, Deacon Wood, no, you don't want to hear that. Well, you figure out. All right. Did you do what you were supposed to do? Did you walk according to your purpose and your call? I don't know about you. Life has been too much of a struggle not to hear well done. Amen. Amen. Amen, lights. Because life is a struggle. But in the end, I want to receive that reward, Reverend Slater, and hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And I explained yesterday in the pastoral installation to Pastor Harris that being a pastor is a call to serve, not to be served. All right. All right now. Tell it like it is. You are talking big, Deacon Woods, because call to be a deacon. <laughs> it's the same thing. Amen. Amen. But we are all called. To wash one another's feet. Yeah. Somebody missed that. We are to serve and love one another. If we're going to make it another 63 years, we have to serve and love one another. If we're going to build up 
the walls of the kingdom we gotta serve yeah. and love one another if we're gonna usher in healing the whole mission that we wrap this church we gotta serve and love one another so what direction should we take after 63 years of gospel ministry number one continue to encourage hope in the faithfulness of Christ while assuring others in the confidence we stand on while we serve as loving channels to and for the glory of God. I'll say it one more time. Did you write it down? Okay. Continue. That means it's an ongoing process. Continue. Okay, I got that. It's an ongoing process to encourage hope and faithfulness while assuring others of the confidence in Christ. Amen. That's what we got to do, though. We have to continue. That means, Sister Shirley, that it never stops. We have to encourage, even when we don't feel like it. All right. We have to love folk, even when we're angry with them. We have to continue to support one another, even if we don't agree. Because the Bible says we need to continue. What that means is that our encouraging and our loving and our holding fast to the word of God never stops. And it's always in the process of beginning. So the church must continue to encourage. When we struggle, and we are going to struggle, we must continue to encourage. We have to put those things behind us. That upset us. Amen. We have to put those things behind us that create friction. And we have to, y'all asked me to break it down. We have to continue. And thank you, Holy Ghost. When we continue, we must be students of the world. If we're going to be prosperous over the next 63 years, we can't just eat on Sunday. All right. Amen. Somebody missed that. You just can't get the word on Sunday. I often tell my class, I say, I don't want nobody to get upset when I say it. We have to go with the gospel of baby face. All right. All right. <laughs> baby face has a group pastor by the name of the deal. They have a song that said, I only think of you on two occasions. Y'all know it coming out. Y'all have heard the song. Y'all ain't that holy. <laughs> He said, I only think of you on two occasions. That's J -A -N -I. I knew y'all knew it. 
But I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to break it down for you from the Bible's perspective. We are to meditate on the word. Come on, come on, y'all with me now. So we are going to be fruitful. And we understand from last week that being fruitful is not the end of our journey. Because the fruit still has to be plucked from the vine. And when it's plucked from the vine, we have to have some sweet juice. Amen. So the only way that we are going to make it successfully is meditating on God on two occasions. That's all right, point number two. Y'all got that? Praise God. We have to exercise. Number two, we have to exercise. The only way you're going to get strong is by doing repetitions. All right. Am I right? The only way you're going to get better is if you do repetitions. So you think about him on two occasions that day and night. Then what you do in the day and the night, you exercise. That means that you put it to practice. All right. The time is over. I don't know why God is taking another witness. The time is over that the church, people of the church lay down their religion. All right. Because you know how it is. Somebody don't do what you want them to do. You said, don't make me lay aside my religion. Nowhere in the word did it ever say you can lay outside. <laughs> so we must practice that which we study and meditate on day and night. Because faith without works is come on now. Not only must we exercise, and when we exercise, it strengthens our endurance. It causes us to be able to stand and withstand those fiery darts of the enemy. But not only that, we must have on our armor. We must be protected as we endure the fight. What the scriptures say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Principalities, dark forces in high places. But let me tell you something those principalities, those dark forces are organized. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that means God's people must begin to be organized as we exercise and, 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 and bring about a stronger physique. So we must continue. We must exercise. But lastly, we must be imitators. Imitators of Christ. Not imitators of the pastor. And not imitators of your favorite teller of angels. Not imitators of anybody you watch on TV, TikTok. or TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, monogram. <laughs> imitators of the true and living God. So we got it now. We continue to encourage. We exercise and we imitate. Understand, if you desire to build on a firm foundation, you will receive all that God has promised. If you desire to truly be what God has called you to be, you will receive what God has promised. 
If you desire to partake of the greater in God, you will receive what God has promised. If you desire to walk in the holiness of God, you will receive what God has promised. The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. As we proceed to our future in God, we will endure hardships, but holistically lean on Jesus' name. If you are struggling, holistically lean on Jesus' name. If you are discouraged, holistically lean on Jesus' name. If you look forward to what God is going to do next, holistically lean on Jesus' name. As God molds you and shapes you for the next level of service, holistically lean on Jesus' name. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Isn't it good to know today that we serve a God that wants us to have the victory? Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that wants to carry us and be with us along the way. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that has forgiven us of all our sins. He saved us from a burning hell. He picked us up from the mess that we were in and he molded us and he's shaping us to be a vessel fit for his use. Just ask the Savior to help you to comfort, to strengthen, to keep you. Oh, my God is willing. He's willing to be you. He and he alone will carry you through. There's no problem. He can't solve. God is going to do some great things. There's no mountain that's too high. God's going to do great things. There's no valley too low. God is going to do great things. There's no storm big enough for God. He's going to continue to do great things. There's no sorrow that's too deep. He's going to continue to do great things. Jesus lets us know he is the way. He is the pathway to our righteousness. He is the Lord. He is our King. He is the bread of heaven. He is living water. He's a burden bearer. He's a bridge of a troubled water. He's a pathway to our peace. He's the roadway to salvation. He's the doorway of our deliverance. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's our one true redeemer. Our way maker, our miracle worker, yeah. and there's no other way. He keeps our foundation secure in striving for the greater. God keeps our foundation secure. God is an unyielding foundation. When trouble comes, God is an unyielding foundation. In our hour of despair, God is an unyielding foundation. Where there's division, God is an unyielding 
foundation and yoke is not always easy. And the load it gets heavy. But God is an unyielding foundation which are lost and we can't find a free God is an unyielding foundation in the midst of serving. There will be tears. There will be struggles. There will be disappointment. But God is an unyielding foundation. Sometimes I feel like I can't make it. I feel like I can't go on. I feel like going in the tower. But I remember that God is an unyielding foundation, a mighty fortress in our God. A bulwark that never fails. Our helper, we will in the flood. A mortal evil. After 63 years, he's still our man. He's still our victory. He's the Lord of all. He's our deliverer. He's our light in the midnight. He's the manifestation of sacrificial love. He forgives sins. He directs paths. He strengthens our spirit. He encourages our heart. He maintains our resistance to evil. He comforts in our time of distress. He protects us from the evil one. He's a keeper, a healer, a firm foundation. He's a will and a fill of the will. He's a glory and to glory. He refutes, he corrects, he informs, he presents. He's good. He beautifies. He acknowledges. He illuminates. He reveals. He saves. He knows. He understands. He cares. He sympathizes. He sustains. He creates. He's kept us to seek the dream. 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 And life, and life 
that can be hard. Life that can be difficult. Life that can be unforgiving is worth living because he lived. Because he lived. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. We can face sickness. We can face poverty. We can face racism. We can face rejection. We can face being destitute. We can face anything because he lives. And the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love God. And I call it according to the purpose because he lives. We can make it another 63 years. Is God good on today? Is God good on today? Is God good on today? Church. 